Hello, so I'm continuing my videos on games that I own but I've only played once and as you can see next up is Space, Space Hulk Death Angel the card game. So I actually had thought I had played this um, twice but my my BGG logged plays shows only once. I kind of think I did start playing it um, a second time and didn't finish it and that's why I didn't log the play um, but anyway I did go ahead and play this again yesterday so I could uh, do a how to play video so let's get started with setup all right you'll shuffle the gene stealer deck which is the deck with this back and the event deck which is the deck with this back and then set them up in two piles um, at the top of the play area. Then you'll find the uh, void lock card. You got several void lock cards and they um, these are the starting locations and they'll show for you know a number of players so this one's for three to six players. So I'm going to be playing it solo so I want the one that says set up for one player. And then you'll just put that here in between your uh, event cards and your gene stealer cards. Alright next you'll um, take these location cards and separate them into so these are like all 1A's, 1B's, there's three of each, 1C's, 2, 3, and 4. So you separate them into separate piles and shuffle them and then you look at the void lock card you chose and it tells you what location uh, cards you'll need. So this is telling me I need a 2, 3, and 4. So I'll choose one of the 2's, one of the 3's, and one of the 4's and then just set them in the pile with the 2 on top and the 4 on the bottom and place them in this location and that will be my uh, other location cards other than the starting location of the void lock. Then these other decks you can just put back in the box. Then starting with the first player and uh, or with a random player and proceeding clockwise each player will choose a uh, combat team marker. Um, the rules say when you're playing uh, solo with one uh, player you'll choose three different combat team markers so I'll just randomly choose I'll take this one this one and uh, this one after you've done drawn your combat team markers then you take the associated action cards that go along that match the combat team marker so uh, like for this one you get there's three action cards and you can tell that they match by the symbol on the bottom so this we take three action cards for that combat team marker and finally we need the three action cards for this combat team marker alright then you'll take the space marine cards for each uh, combat team that's going to be in play there should be two for each and you can match the symbol on the card so uh, for this one we've got Sergeant Lorenzo and brother Dano and then we're not playing with this combat team we're not playing with this combat team uh, we do have this one so we'll take Sergeant Gideon and brother Noctis and we're not playing with this combat team so finally we'll need uh, brother Leon and brother Valencio so we'll take the Marines we're gonna play with then we shuffle this deck up so let me do that off camera then we'll take our deck of Space Marines and place them in a vertical line under this starting location void lock card with the top three cards facing left and you can tell they're facing by this arrow so we'll take uh, we've got brother Noctis brother Dano Sergeant Gideon he needs to be facing left again that arrow shows the facing and then we've got brother Valencio Sergeant Lorenzo and brother Leon so 
oh wait this one needs to be the bottom three um, or bottom half depending on how many players you have uh, the top half face left and the bottom half face right then you'll just place these support tokens uh, in a pile somewhere near the players then you'll set up your terrain cards. You'll notice that the starting location void lock card shows you what terrain cards you need by those icons and where they go. So uh, you take your terrain deck and look for the symbols that match what we need. So we see this symbol here. So we need, know we need this ventilation, ventilation duct that matches that symbol. Then uh, this corridor matches that symbol over here we have the dark corner so we see we need that one and finally we see we need the door so that symbol matches that so we'll take that terrain card and then depending on what side of this card it on tells you what side of the formation that the terrain goes and uh, where so this says one from the top which actually becomes the top uh, card so uh, the door goes on the left side here one card down from the top uh, then we need the uh, dark corner and that's three cards down from the top you see the down arrow there so one two three and then over here uh, you see these have an up arrow, so they come up from the bottom. So we see that the uh, corridor goes two up from the bottom, so that's one, two. And uh, finally we see that the ventilation duct goes three up from the bottom, so that will be here. One, two, three. Alright, so we got our terrain cards placed. Then this void lock starting location shows you the number of gene stealer cards you put on each blip pile on each side of the formation. So we need six gene stealer cards here on this left side and six gene stealer cards here on this right side to form our two blip piles. So let me get those set up. Alright, again this shows you need six in your left uh, blip pile and six in your right blip pile. So I've got those and again you deal those out of the gene stealer deck and the last thing we need to do for setup is spawn our starting gene stealers and the way we do that is just draw the top card of the event deck and we know everything except for the spawning information so down here we look and it says we'll need to spawn gene stealers on the uh, terrain tile with the four red bars which we have one which is the ventilation duct and then we need to spawn gene stealers on the terrain type with the two yellow bars and the only one we have like that is the door and the number of gene stealers you spawn is dependent on this icon so with this yellow uh, icon yellow triangle icon is a major spawn and you look at your the void lock card you're using so you'll see that that means we need to spawn two gene stealers at each of those locations and you take those from the blip piles that you form so we know we need to put two on this red tile so from our blip pile we spawn two gene stealers from our blip pile here on the right you take from the blip pile from whichever ever side the terrain is on so the red red terrain here is on the right side of this formation so we take from the right side blip pile and then we need two on the uh, door which is on the left side so we'll draw from the left side blip pile and it's better to put with these icons showing so two gene stealers spawn there at the door and two gene stealers spawn here at the ventilation duct and that's set up and now we're ready to play alright so the object of the game is the space marines are starting at this initial location the void lock or the entry into the ship but they're in a uh, space hulk ship and they need to travel to the final location remember we chose um, 
three other location cards here that was determined um, here on the void lock card. So they need to travel to the final location and uh, fulfill whatever the object um, objective is on that final location card, which we won't know until we get there. Or if they're on the final location uh, and they eliminate all the gene stealers um, that are in play and in the blip, plot, blip piles at that final location, then that will also win them the game. The players lose the game if all uh, the Space Marines are eliminated before they've actually won the game by getting to the final location, like we said, and fulfilling its objective or destroying all the Space Marines. So, how do you play the game? Well, it's played in uh, four phases. You have your Choose Actions phase, Resolve Actions phase, Gene Stealer Attack phase, and the Event phase. So let's talk about each of those phases. All right, the first phase is the choose action phase. So each player will choose one of their action cards that they're going to use for the round. Now, of course, if you're playing solo, you'll choose one card for each of your uh, combat team markers. And the action cards kind of determine what you're going to do um, for the round. So you have... Uh, and each player's um, action cards, they have the same basic roles like attack, move and activate, and support. But they'll have a special ability, and that will be different uh, for each of the uh, different combat teams. And another thing, um, when you're choosing your action cards, whatever action card you choose for one round that will not be available for you to choose from for the next round. So, if, like if I chose the attack action this round for this combat team, well, next round, his only available choices are going to be support or move and attack. He won't be able to choose the attack action again. Another uh, bit of information that is on your action card is there's a number up here in the top left and that's going to determine the order in which um, players will take their turns going with the lowest number. So if uh, you know this combat team chose this card, and uh, this one chose this card, and this one chose this card, well, we have a 1, so uh, the green team would take their action first. And then we got a three, so that would be followed by here. The purple team would then take their action. And finally, a four, the uh, red team would take their action. Now, you probably wouldn't want to do three support actions um, and nobody attacking. So um, one thing when you're choosing your actions, you, you can't specifically show the other players what card you're going to play but you can say something like, well, I'd like to attack this round, but uh, I'll need somebody to support me. You know, something like that. But you can't actually show. So when you, when you choose your action card, everybody chooses an action card um, and puts it face down in front of them. And then once everybody's placed their card face down in front of them, then you will go to the next phase, um, which is the resolve actions phase, and then everybody will reveal their cards, and then that, again, that'll determine the order in which um, you're going to take your actions. So, as I mentioned, all the action cards come in three basic types, attack, support, or move and activate, but the special abilities are different for the different uh, combat teams. But let's talk about uh, what the basic, you know, like attack, support, and move and activate. So when you do a support action, you'll take one of these support tokens and you can place it on any marine in the formation, even in other players. Well, of course, if you're playing solo like me, they're all yours. But anyway, you can place a support token on any marine in the formation. 
and what that support token allows a player to do is he can spend a, a player with a support token on him or a marine with a support token on him can spend it to re-roll a die when he's attacking or defending and we'll talk about how that uh, works here shortly but um, you can only use it if you are facing the, the uh, gene stealers that you are attacking or defending if for instance you know, here uh, Brother Noctis is facing these um, gene stealers. So if he was attacking them or defending them, he could discard this to re-roll a die. But if they were on the other side of the formation, the opposite side from where he's facing, um, so basically attacking him from behind, he would not be able to discard a support token uh, to re-roll an attack or defend. Now, if your uh, special ability, um, like if you played the support and you're using this spe special ability each time Sergeant Gideon rolls a, a skull on the dice, the dice you roll has numbers and uh, some of them, half of them, the one, two, and three have the skulls. And that's how the Space Marines get hits, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. But each time Sergeant Gideon rolls a hit while defending, the attack misses. So that can be used no matter the facing. So your special ability, unless it states otherwise, can be used um, no matter if you're facing the enemies that are attacking you or not. All right, the other uh, thing you can, the other type of action you can take is the move and activate. So when you take the move and activate, you can uh, do any or part of the following. You can move to an adjacent position. So if you do that, <clears throat> like say uh, he played this move and activate card, he can move one of his. So if, the, if this blue or purple combat team plays a move and activate, then he can only use that on his um, combat team members. So he could move each of his combat team uh, members or space marines. And to move, you just swap places with a space marine adjacent to you. So if he was going to move, he could move and swap places with this space marine or uh, with the one above him. And then, the, then he could also do it with this one. So when you do a move and activate, you can do a move with both of the space marines of your color if they're both still in play. Then when you move or after you move um, you could also change facing so um, if this player wanted to move down here and then he could change his facing by flipping his card over and then he's facing left. Um, or again you can do any of these things so if you didn't want to move but you wanted to change facing and you could just change your facing and then the last thing uh, with the move and activate is uh, the activate so some terrain cards have an activate action on them so if you uh, move and or change facing or are facing anyway if you're facing a terrain card um, that has the activate um, symbol then you can if you've played the move and activate you can activate that card by doing what it says so for instance this door place one support token on this card and remember these are the support tokens and then when traveling the current player may first slay one gene stealer in the formation for each token on this card. So we haven't talked about traveling yet, but that's basically when you go to the next location. And so for each uh, support token on this card, you would get to kill one gene stealer. Um, well, actually one gene stealer in the formation, which would be anywhere here, not just the one, not just gene stealers next to this terrain marker. So, um, it, None of the other uh, terrain cards in this formation currently have activate um, powers on them, but some other ones do. And so again, that's um, 
if, when you play a move and activate if your marine is next to and facing a terrain uh, card with an activate power then you can activate that power so again with the move and activate you can do any of those things you can move change facing and if you're facing a terrain card that can be activated you can do that or you can just do any part of it move only or change facing only or activate only if you're able to do so and then of course the last uh, basic uh, action available is attack so when you play the attack now of course there may be some special ability but we're just going to talk about the basic attack that player, uh, that combat team who played the attack, can attack Gene Stealers um, with each of his Space Marines that are within range and that he is facing. So, uh, for instance, Brother Dano here, his range is 2. Well, a range of 0 is um, um, gene stealers that are in the exact same row as you. A range of one would be gene stealers in a row above or below you, and a range of two would allow you to attack gene stealers um, in a row up to two below you. But you must be facing. So, if if uh, Brother Dana wanted to make an attack here, he he has a range two, so. Range 0 would be this row. Range 1 would be these genes. So he would be able to attack these gene stealers here. Um, he couldn't attack any, even, the, even though these are only uh, 2 below him, um, 0, 1, 2 in his range of 2, but his facing is this way. So he would not be able to attack these gene stealers. If he was facing the other way, since his range is 2, he would be able to attack these gene stealers. And to make an attack, Space Marine, you simply roll this dice, and if you get one of the three sides, the one, the one, two, or three, one of the sides that shows a skull, then you have a hit, and you choose one of the Gene Stealer cards to be killed, and you simply remove it and put it in a discard pile. If you roll anything else, that's a miss. So, 50% chance. And again, if you have a support token on you and you've got a miss, then you discard the support token and roll again. All right, well, that pretty much covers the resolve actions phase. Um, so the next phase is the gene stealer attack phase. And that's when the gene stealers get uh, a turn to attack the space marines. So, um, again, after all the space marines have uh, resolve their action cards you go to the gene stealer attack phase and you resolve that starting with the top um, row and go down the formation so any rows that have um, gene stealers in them then that swarm a, a, a collection of gene stealer cards that are in a uh, Gene Stealers in the same row as a Space Marine are considered engaged with him. So uh, you'll go down the formation starting with the top and go down and any swarm of Gene Stealers, which is a group of <laughs> Gene Stealers that are you know, on one side of formation that are engaged with a Space Marine will attack. If there are two swarms of Space Marines uh, are two swarms of gene stealers, you know, one swarm on the left side and one swarm on the right side. They'll both attack the space marine, but you resolve the ones on the left side first and then you resolve the ones on the right side. So when a swarm of gene stealers attacks a space marine, the space marine will roll a dice and if he rolls less than the number of less than or equal to than the number of gene stealers in the swarm attacking him, then he's hit and killed. If he rolls higher than the number of uh, gene stealers in the swarm attacking him, then it's a miss. So in this case, uh, this swarm, there's two in that swarm, so if he rolls higher than a two, you know, a three, four, five, uh, 
then he would uh, survive. But if he rolls a zero, one, or two, then he's hit and he's immediately killed and removed from the game. And again, remember, if he has a support token and the swarm that's attacking him um, is he's facing, then he can discard, if he's hit, he can discard a support token to reroll that gene stealer attack. Um, but if the swarm was on this side and he was not facing them, then he could not discard a support token to reroll the gene stealer attack. So you just do that going down. So in this instance, this swarm would attack this guy, and then we'd come down and this swarm would attack this guy. And that's all the gene stealers we have. So that's all the attacks you would have in this gene stealer attack phase. And when a space marine is uh, slain and you remove their card, then you have to shift um, the smaller section of the formation to fill in uh, the rest of the formation. So in this case, then uh, the door would move down the door and this swarm of gene stealers would move down here uh, next to Brother Dano. Whereas if, uh, you know, this guy was killed, um, then this space marine would just move up here to the corridor. So anyway, you, sh you shift the smallest section of the uh, formation up or down depending on where a space marine was killed at. And if both space marines of a combat team are killed, then that player can no longer play action cards because they're out of the game. And then the final thing after uh, the Gene Stealer attack phase is the event phase. And there you'll uh, draw the top card of the event deck, which will look something like it, you know, this card that we drew to spawn cards at the beginning of the game. But when you draw during the event phase, first thing you do is resolve whatever the uh, special ability here. So like this one says choose a blip pile and discard the top card of the chosen pile. Now the person that um, does this um, or makes whatever choice there is on the event card is the person who played the uh, lowest numbered card during the action round, the choose actions round. They're basically called the current player so they choose um, what it, whenever there's a choice to be done on an event card, they choose that. After that's done, then you'll spawn uh, and move gene stealers. So you would spawn uh, new gene stealers. You know, of course, this is the card we drew to uh, start the game, so it's just showing these same locations. We already have one, but a new a, a new event card would have probably different locations. Now, the number of bars here is the uh, probability that a new another gene stealer will spawn at that location. So, the terrain card with the four bars, the ventilation deck, there's a pretty good possibility that new gene stealers will spawn there with for future event cards. Whereas a card with only two bars, you know, has about a 50-50 chance of spawning new genes. So anyway, you'll spawn new gene stealers according to what's on the bottom of the event cards from the blip piles. If, there, if a blip pile is empty or there's not enough cards in there to spawn the amount that it says to spawn, then you just don't spawn them. You can only spawn what's available in the blip pile. And then you'll move swarms that have uh, a gene stealer with this icon in them. And the way you move them, first you look, see each gene stealer has a, an icon, so you would look for one that matches this symbol. So neither of those gene stealers match that symbol, and neither gene stealer in this swarm match that symbol. So in this case, no swarms would move, but if you did have a symbol that matched one of these swarms, um, you would move them in this manner. So if a swarm was going to move, you look at the space marine they're engaged with, and they'll have arrows, which will show. So you'll see this has up arrows. So if this swarm was going to move, um, then they would move up one uh 
position in the formation or if so the bottom three here depends on the facing obviously you'll either move up or down so uh, this swarm if it was going to move it would move down one position in the formation and you move the entire swarm not just the one that matched so if the card um, had only one matching gene stealer in this swarm you wouldn't just move that one matching gene stealer you would move the whole swarm uh, down one because of these arrows here on the bottom of the space marine card and there's also <clears throat> one other type of movement icon it's like a arrow curved arrow which means instead of moving up or down you move you flank the space marine so you move to the uh, opposite side, the opposite position of them, so you're behind them. But if you're already behind them, then you just don't move. So um, you stay in the flanking position. And that's all of the event phase. So um, the only thing we haven't talked about is traveling. So when it, whenever these one of these blip piles becomes empty, at the end of whichever phase... Um, that occurs in then at the end of that phase then you'll travel to the new location so you'll flip over the next location card um, covering the void lock card then that location card will have terrain so you'll put whatever terrain uh, where that location card tells you and um, it may have some uh, and that, that new location card will tell you how to refill your blip pile. So you'll discard uh, any existing blip uh, gene stealers and then refill the, uh, the blip piles according to the numbers on the new location card. And then there may be, an, uh, on the location card, it may have um, something that says upon entering and has some ability that you do um, upon entering the new location. And then you uh, will start over a new round or a new phase, you know, depending on what phase uh, the travel occurred in. And so that's how you play the game until you get to the final card. And again, the final card, uh, you'll want to resolve whatever its uh, ability is that uh, tells you that you win the game or if you are on the final location card and empty both your blip piles and any gene stealers in the formation then you win and if before any of that happens all of the space marines are slain then the players or player loses so uh, that's how you play the game why don't we go through uh, a couple of sample turns and uh, see how it goes so we'll just start with the setup that we already have and uh, so the first thing is the choose uh, actions phase um, now we know this green player he's probably going to want to attack since he's got some gene stealers so I think we'll have him he's going to choose his attack action card which is this middle one now again if you're playing with other players you would uh, put your card out face down since I'm playing alone <laughs> Um, I don't need to um, do that so then maybe blue wants to support him so he puts a support token so we'll have him do his uh, support card so he's going to play his support card and then red has some gene stealers also so uh, he may want to attack so we'll probably do red's attack card also all right so everybody's chosen their action card now we look at the order the lowest is going to be three um, blues three then green 16 and then red 17 all right so the player that played this card support gets to put a support token on somebody so uh, we'll just say he's going to put it here on brother noctis and he also has this ability that each time Sergeant Lorenzo, which is uh, this blue Space Marine down here, 
Each time he rolls a skull when defending, the attack misses and slays one of the attacking gene stealers. If the swarm still contains a gene stealer, it attacks again. So that won't come into play until the gene stealer attack phase. All right, next we go to the next lowest card, which is 16. Um, so that's the green player. He gets to do an attack with both his space marines, and he has this special ability. Each time one of your attacking space marine rolls a four, slay up to three gene stealers from the descent defending swarm. So, man, a four is what he really wants to get better than a skull. All right, so he's going to attack. Um... He's going to attack with Brother Noctis, this swarm here. So let's see what he gets. Well, he gets a skull, so that's one hit. So he gets to eliminate one of these gene stealers. Um, so he doesn't have to waste his support token on a reroll. Now Green also has Sergeant Gideon, but unfortunately he has a range zero attack, so he can only attack... Um, gene stealers that are in the same position as he is so he's not able to attack um, so that's going to be the end of green's turn so finally we come to red he did attack also and brother leon may attack up to three times instead of just once all right well first he'll start with uh, brother valencio um, he's going to attack these gene stealers so he's going to roll he gets a five, so that's a miss. Um, so now we come to Brother Leon, and remember he can attack up to three times instead of just once. And he's got a range three, so one, two, he can attack these gene stealers that are up here attacking his brother. So here we go with his first attack. What do we roll? A four, that's a miss. Roll again. Three, um, but we got a skull, so that's a hit. So we discard this gene stealer. And he can attack one more time. And another school. So great. We got rid of uh, all the gene stealers in that swarm. Alright. Well, that's all the uh, action cards for the uh, Space Marines. So now we go to the gene stealer attack phase. We've only got one gene stealer left. And he's attacking uh, Brother Noctis. So remember, Brother Noctis or the green player rolls the dice. And if he rolls... Uh, higher than the number of gene stealers then he's not slain if he rolls less than then he's slain and of course he has this support token where he could re-roll if he so if he rolls a zero or one he's in trouble but otherwise he's okay got a two so he's good so the gene stealers miss their attack all right so now we go to the event phase so we draw an event card and it says Choose a space marine with at least one support token. Dis all, discard all the support tokens. Now, of course, the current player, which is the one who played the lowest numbered card, decides that. But there's not much to decide because there's only one player with a support token. So, uh, unfortunately, we have to discard it. Then we um, do a major spawn on the red card. And remember, a major spawn is two... Uh, uh, gene stealers and uh, the red ventilation duck is here so we're going to spawn two gene stealers there and then we do a minor spawn which the minor spawn is only one gene stealer on the green card which is here the corridor so that's only one space marine and again it comes out of this blip pile um, so that will go, or one gene stealer, so that will go there. Then if we have a swarm that uh, has a gene stealer with this um, icon in it, then that swarm will move. But none of those match that, that doesn't match that, and that doesn't match that. So none of these are going to move, so now this event card is just put in the discard pile, and we start a new uh, round. So we come back to the choose action phase. Now remember the players cannot choose the card they chose last round. So they have to choose from the two that they have left. Um, so what do we have? Well we know Blue, he probably wants to attack and he's able to because he uh, um, 
didn't attack last time so that's what he's going to play and uh, neither green nor red can attack because they attacked last time so let's see I don't think anybody, neither green nor red, need to move at this point. So we'll have both of them do uh, support actions. So uh, green will do his block support action. And red will do his overwatch support action. And now we're finished with the choose action phase. And we'll see one uh, green will go first, red will go second, and blue will go last. So green being first, he did a support action, so he gets to put a support token. And he's going to put that on Brother Valencio. And let's just see what his special power there. Each time Sergeant Gideon rolls a skull while defending, the attack misses. All right, red is next. He also did a support, so he gets to put a support token on somebody, and he's going to put that on. Uh, he'll put that up here on Brother Noctis, and then his special ability at the end of the event phase, each of your Space Marines may spend one support token to make an attack, if they have one on them. All right, so finally we come to. Uh, blue player here he's doing an attack and when one of your space marines slays a gene stealer you may place one support token on any space marine limit once per round all right well he's got brother uh, Dano here with a range 2 attack so he can and he's facing this gene stealer swarm so he's gonna attack there I actually put should have put that support token on this guy so I could have got a re-roll. But it doesn't matter. He got a skull. So this guy is dead. Alright. And, and when one of your space marines slays a gene stealer. You may place one support token on any space marine. So he did slay one. So he's going to put a support token on uh, Sergeant Lorenzo. Alright. Um, now we come down. Um, the next blue guy that's doing an attack now even though sergeant valencio's got gene stealers remember he didn't play an attack card so he can't attack so um sergeant lorenzo can attack though and he will uh roll and he's he has a range too so he could attack either one of these swarms but he's gonna attack the swarm that's attacking him and he gets a skull, so that's a hit. So he destroys that gene stealer. Now, unfortunately, this uh, power is only once per round, so he can't place a support token on anybody. But now we've finished the uh, actions phase, so we go on to the gene stealer attack. Well, the only gene stealers we have to attack are this um, set. So, um, they're going to attack, did I? But anyway, these guys are going to attack Brother Valencio, and um, there's two of them, so he's going to roll, if he rolls uh, zero, one, or two, then he's slain, so he needs to roll a three, four, or five. Three, so he's safe, so he doesn't get killed, they miss. All right, so we go on to the event phase, draw an event card, Psychic Exalt. Choose a Space Marine and roll a die. If you roll a zero or one, the Space Marine is slain. Now remember, the person that chooses this is green because he played the lowest card uh, last time. So he chooses a Space Marine to roll against. So he chooses Brother Leon. All right, so he's going to roll, and on a zero or one, Brother Leon is slain. Now, luckily, it's a five, so no worries. All right, so we do a minor spawn, so we know that's just one gene stealer um, here at the red card. Oh, so it comes out of the blip pile. Now, that's going to empty this blip pile, so at the end of this phase, the Space Marines are going to uh, travel. But anyway, that's going to go there. And then we do a minor spawn at the orange card. 
so that's over here so that's going to come out of this blip pile and that's going to go here and then if there's any swarms with this symbol then they're going to flank so um, this one does not but this swarm does have that symbol see it matches both of these gene stealers but the whole swarm is going to flank so that means they're going to move to the opposite side of uh, brother Valencio here and be behind him all right so um, when traveling the uh, first thing you do is uh, draw a new location card so you want to kind of want to leave the the um, <laughs> swarm or spawn tokens uh, visible so you can still remember that what the major mon <coughs> minor spawns are but uh, then you put the new uh, terrain cards um, so we need the dark corner which we already have but that becomes uh, the card in the first spot and then we need the door actually goes to the third spot so those are just kind of swapping places and then the uh, ventilation duct goes in the fifth spot um, up so one two three four five so the ventilation duct is actually going to go here and then we have the cores so the same terrain tiles are staying there's going to be in different spots one two three four all right now the gene stealers any gene stealers that are engaged with space marines also stay um, even when you travel unless if you remember if we had um, put some support tokens activated the door then we may have been able to eliminate some when we traveled but we didn't so next we discard and refill our blip piles so we discard these remaining here and then uh, we deal still need six in each pile so I'm going to de create two new blip piles let me do that all right, got the two new blip piles, each with six, because that's what the new location card states. And then it has an upon entering ability. The current player must choose a space marine with zero support tokens, if able, and spawn one gene stealer behind that space marine. Now remember, the current player is the one who played the lowest card in the last round, which that's green still. So he has to choose a space marine that has, doesn't have a support token so it's either going to be this one this one or this one and he's going to spawn a space marine behind him so um, and again it comes from a blip pile so we'll just say he's going to choose uh, he'll, he'll pick on brother Leon again so it's going to because um, brother Leon is facing this way and he has to spawn a gene stealer um, behind him it's going to come from this blip pile so he's going to spawn this one right here all right we'll do one more round and then wrap it up now remember that travel occurred at the end of the uh, event phase so we do just go on and uh, go to the new choose actions phase and uh, let me move these down a little bit and remember they can't choose uh, these actions well both red players now they can't uh, they could play an attack card but they don't have any uh, gene stealers that they're facing so what they're going to probably have to do is play a move card so they can flip over so they're going to take their move and activate and they're going to play that uh, green probably wants to attack he's got a gene stealer here so he's going to play his attack card this round and blue blue doesn't have any uh, gene stealers um, attacking that are going to attack him so I think he's going to play his support card 
So uh, we got 3, 7, and 16. So it's going to be blue, red, and green. So blue first, so he gets to put a su support token on somebody. He thinks he better put that on Brother Valencio since he's got three uh, gene stealers on him. All right, next is red with the number seven. Um, they did the move and activate. Each time one of your space marines activates a door, you may place one additional support token. Um, so he may do that. All right, so first let's see. They're going to move. So um, Brother Leon, I'll, I think all he's going to do is change his facing. And uh, all Brother Valencio is going to do is change his facing. Um, actually, he could swap places with... Uh, yeah, he's going to do that. He's going to put uh, Sergeant Gideon in a spot, and he's going to move up here and um, change his facing, and then he can activate that door. And because of the, the power, um, each time he um, activates a door, he can put one additional token. So remember, when you activate, you place one, so he actually gets to place two on here. So next time they travel, they'll get to eliminate two two of the gene stealers that are uh, in the formation. Of course that kind of puts Sergeant Gideon in a pickle because he doesn't have any support tokens but uh, we'll see what happens. Okay well that's the end of his move and activate. Um, so finally we come to green and they did play an attack card and each time one of your attacking space marine rolls a four slay up to three gene stealers. Um, so we'll hope again he rolls a four. Well, Brother Noctis doesn't have anybody to attack, um, so he, he's not going to attack anybody. But Sergeant Gideon um, does have three gene stealers, and uh, he's got range zero, so he can only attack gene stealers there. So he's going to roll, and he's going to hope, uh, hope to God he rolls a four because of that special power he's got. And he got a five, so he hits nothing. So that's not good. Alright, well that's everybody's action, so now we go on to the Gene Stealer attack phase. So first we have here uh, one Gene Stealer attacking uh, Brother Valencio. Since it's only one, as long as he doesn't roll a zero or a one, he's okay. And two, so he's good. Now unfortunately, Sergeant Gideon, he's got three, so unless he rolls a four or five, he's going to be killed. So he should be pissed at Brother Valencio for moving him into that position. And he rolled a three. So he's slain. So he's killed. He goes out of the game. Now the smaller section shifts up. So that's going to shift this guy up here, this guy up here, and this guy up here. And now Sergeant Lorenzo's the one that's in trouble because he's not even facing those... Uh, gene stealer so that's all oh wait uh, no we still have uh, this guy hasn't attacked um, so now this gene stealer is going to attack brother Leon so if he rolls a zero or a one he's in trouble otherwise he's okay oh no <laughs> he got a one so brother Leon he's out and now this guy is going to move up and join this swarm so not good and finally, we have the event phase uh, out of thin air. Choose a space marine spotting two gene stealers behind him. And the person with the lowest uh, card is the current player. That's uh, blue. So he would decide um, to choose a space marine and spawn two gene stealers behind him. So he's going to choose uh, Brother Noctis. So remember, they come out of this blip pile here. Alright, that resolves that. Now we're going to do a minor spawn on the orange card. So that's over here. So that's just one Space Marine, or one Gene Stealer. I don't know why I keep saying Space Marine. And then a minor spawn on the red card, um, which is here. That comes out of this blip pile. And that's just one Gene Stealer there. And then look if any are going to flank. Um, any with this symbol. None of them here do. 
not here, not here. Oh, this one does. But he's already behind him, so he just won't move. If he wasn't behind him, he'd move to the opposite side. And then this group doesn't have that symbol, so that's it. And uh, now we would start another round. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how the game plays. So um, I think it's kind of a fun game, but my problem is the two times I've played it and looking like now this third time, I just get demolished before I even get close to getting to the, uh, you know, the final location. So... I don't know, after just those few plays, I can't tell you for sure, but it, it seems overly difficult to me for the Space Marine players to uh, have a chance of winning, um, at least again from the two and a half times that I've played it. So, and it's so punishing, it's like I really don't have a burning desire to play again and just get, uh, you know, beat down. So, I don't know. Um, it, like I said, it, it is kind of enjoyable to decide what you're going to do and decide what actions you're going to do and seeing it play out, but it is definitely not enjoyable <laughs> to have the gene stealers just wipe you out so easily. So I'm not sure if there's something you could do to maybe uh, mitigate some of that, maybe start everybody with one support token or something. Uh, I don't know. I really haven't looked in the board game geek forums to see if anybody, uh, first of all, if everybody agrees it's overly hard uh, for the Space Marine players to win or if there's something to maybe make it a little easier. Um, maybe it's a combination of the combat teams you pick. Um, I'm not sure. But again, I, I, I just don't have any desire to uh, play another game of this anytime soon and I remember that same feeling from when I played it the first time and I didn't even get close to winning I think I probably got maybe to the second location card like I did now and you know was wiped out so uh, you'll just have to uh, give it a try yourself I guess and uh, see what you think but anyway uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it